So today I'm doing a little tutorial on how to host your own Swiss MTG tournaments, both uh, local ones or online ones. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make an eTrap account and log in. And you go to the tourney page and my tourneys. Uh, but before that, I'm going to look at a couple of the public tourneys posted here. So this is how it basically looks when you're done with the tourney. We are just going to click on a random tourney here. You can see the final standings uh, of all the people participating. Uh, so you can decide whether you want the tourneys to be public or you want them to be private. If they are private, it's kind of hard to share the tourney with the other participants, so it might be a good idea to make it public. Uh, there are no restrictions on how many public or private tourneys you can have. So let's go ahead and uh, start one. So I'm using the eTrub account right now. I'm gonna go to new tournament and we're just gonna write test tourney. And let's say we want to hold a little booster draft. And we're gonna let this be public. So what I'm gonna do now is just create a local tourney on the fly. Uh, we're not really making a joinable tourney here, we're just making a small little local tourney. So we can just ignore all of these options for now. Uh, they don't do anything useful for our little local tourney. There's no deck submission or anything like that. Uh, and there's no players signing up, so these options are kind of meaningless. These are only uh, for when people are registering themselves. So what I could do is add myself into the tourney. So the first thing we have to do is register players. I could add myself if I click this. It will add my own eTrub account. But I'm going to simulate like a pure local tourney without using any of the eTrub accounts at all. So I'm just going to add myself. And as you can see, I have already held a lot of tournaments earlier, so it will auto-complete with uh, players that I have played with before. And I also have myself here, but for now I'm just going to add a new entity. So this is me, and I'm, let's add a couple of other planeswalkers. Jace. And you can see that when I start writing, it will auto-complete. Chandra. So, we are ready to start the tournament. As I said earlier, you do not have to worry about this. Uh, the rounds will auto-select. Uh, the system will look at the number of players in the tourney and it will select the aggregate rounds. You can manually overwrite this. Uh, just be careful when you do this. When you put in, for example, five rounds and you add another player. Goblin Guide is gonna play in the tourney. And you can see that the rounds will reset down to 4, because that's the ideal number for 9 players. So let's go ahead and start the tourney. And this is basically all you have to do. Uh, so everything is ready now, you can just hit auto pairings and start round 1. Uh, you can also manual pair, uh, like this. You can pair these two players together, and pair these two. You can give that player a buy, like that. So the only scenario manual pairing is used is when there are some errors or you have to do overwrite something, like someone's late and you had to add a new player and you just give them a buy or something like that. So I've just unpaired everyone, clicking save, and we're gonna auto pair them. And there we go. So as a tourney organizer, you have to put in the results for each match when they are done. Uh, when you use the eTrub accounts, public tourneys and invite people, they can report the, uh, the results themselves. But right now these are just local players, so there's no eTrub account assigned to them. So do note that if you play local tourneys like these, and at a later point you want to have public tourneys and add other eTrub users, like you can't convert these local users into eTrub accounts. So you basically have to make a decision, uh, and this is relevant if you run leagues, that we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, a bit later. So let's report the results. Gideon lost, of course, to the wonderful Chandra. Uh, we have a player that had to leave, t -Balt. He had to go, and he lost to zero. And Goblin Guide and Vraska, they decided to force a draw, 1-1-1. 
Nicole, Bolas, and Jace, they played a lot of mind games. Ended with Bolas 1, of course. Uh, they also have two draws. So they played a lot of rounds. They were really quick, quick rounds. So saving the results. So after you have all the results from the first round, you can go ahead and click next one. And uh, before you pair, like this is useful if you play a lot of rounds, you can go back and look at the standings and just check with everyone that it looks correct and there's no wrong results uh, reported. So if you wonder what these are, the terminology is explained here. I will not go into that right now. You can also go back to the earlier round and look at the standings there. So this is the first round, obviously, so there's no standings from the first round. Uh, but you can look at the uh, results. And as an admin, you can also edit the results. So like the earlier you find an error, uh, the better it is to edit the earlier rounds. So it's not a good idea to... If you're in round three, it's not good to correct an error in round one because the there will be some weird error, errors and uh, pairings uh, at that point. So we're gonna go back to round two and just auto pair them. And this is gonna go automatically. So one of the players, well, none of the player, players are gonna get a buy because T-Bolt left, obviously. So, so we'll just mark him with the strike through in his name, uh, showing that he he's dropped. So this is basically it, there's nothing else to it. You just deliver results and you go to the next round and you have the final standings. Now let's go back to the first page again. Let's make another tourney. We're gonna call this one Advanced Tourney. Go ahead and create it, make it public. And this time we're gonna look at what all of these options are. So the name and the privacy you already know. So if you run a private one, like you can't have players uh, signing up to the tourney, so it has to be public for people to join in. DCI number, uh, this might be familiar for a lot of you paper players. Uh, it's an option you can have, as default it is hidden. Uh, we don't have a support with the official tourney event uh, reporter. So this is only, well, it's a cool thing to have. So you can, you can have it as an optional one usually, or you can have a required one. Required one would be a bit weird in this system. But if you, if the event reporter is down, like it, this is emergency solution, you can put in required so people have to submit their DCI number to join. So DCI number, I'm gonna put as a hid, hidden game display name. So this is like the MTG Online or MTG Arena nick. This is very useful to put as required if we're gonna have an online tourney uh, in Arena, for example, like the e community tourneys, we always have this as uh, required. Uh, deck submissions, in e community tournaments, we have this as required as well. So the cool thing about the deck submission system is that it works with the legality checker. So if you run a standard tournament, the legality checker will check if the deck that is submitted by the player is a standard legal deck. The chat box is the thing over here. It's the thing that the players and the admin can chat in. <clears throat> the tourneys are run live on the web page, so everybody that is uh, online can chat in this little box. Uh, you can put it as disabled, so this is useful, for example, if you stream on Twitch, uh, like in the eTrop community tourney again. We always have this disabled because we want people to chat in the Twitch chat instead of this chat. Uh, we had the tourney and the Twitch chat earlier, and that was a mess, so we added the option to disable it. Leagues is a little cool thing. Uh, so to understand what this is, this is basically just uh, tourneys grouped together in groups. So if we go uh, under tourneys and go to the public leagues, you can search for Etrohub here. So let's go into an earlier league we had, uh, the Ether Championship. So this contains 13 tourneys. You can kind of look at the leagues as like a folder for tourneys. And it summarizes all the stats of all the uh, tourneys and all the players in the tourneys. So second barrel, he had four tourney wins and he part played in 13 tourneys. He played in all of them. So all the uh, stats are the tourneys added together. So this is very useful. And each tourney can be a part of multiple leagues. So I can like put this tourney in both of these leagues. So you can have like a yearly and a weekly tourney and stuff like that. Add the description. Uh, this is used for uh, yeah, basically the description of the tourney. Uh, if you run many tournaments like a we weekly ones, I've added a copy option. 
So you can copy all the uh, text from uh, an earlier tournament. You can do this here. As you can see, it copied all the earlier text and you just have to edit a couple of things in here and it's good to go. Start time. So this is only, you have to define this in this time zone. Time zone converting is, uh, is annoying to say the least. So we have to input it in this, but when the user opens the public link, the, the uh, time will be displayed in his or in the browser's time zone, like the time zone the browser is defined in. So I'm going to put this here and it's going to start 19.00. This is the link. So do note if you open this link in your own browser, you will just be led to this page. So to open this link, you either have to log out or you have to open another browser to, to see how it looks. So let's uh, take a quick look uh, at how this tourney looks so far. So this is how it looks uh, and I will have to put in my uh, MTJ number. So I'm just going to put Andre 3000, not 4000, 3000 and sign up. And now I'm signed up and I'm just waiting for the organizer to approve. And as you can see, I didn't submit a deck. Uh, that's because I, I didn't save. <laughs> so that was actually a little mistake by me, but this is a good example of how the system works. So I did an error and that player has signed up. Uh, so I want to correct the error. I want to put on the deck submissions again. Uh, so how do I do that? I, I can either approve him or I can just decline him like this. And this, uh, doing it this way, the player has to sign up again. So I th threw him out and I put deck submissions required. So let's go back and look at the player side of the view. And now I have to submit a deck. So I select a deck. I can either select one of the decks I have in my own collection or I can paste a URL to an Etherhub deck. So I'm just gonna select this deck and the uh, legality en engine will do its thing and check that it is legal. And I can just press sign up. And now I'm waiting again, going back to the other screen, to the admin. So I can see the player submit the deck and I know that it is legal because the legality engine has done its thing. I can also see the eTrop account the user is signed up with and this is the name he has signed up with on the tourney. This defaults to the same as the eTrop account but uh, the player can change this. So I'm going to prove him like this and I'm also going to add myself to the tournament. And I haven't selected a deck, uh, I can override this as an admin so I don't really care about that right now. I just want to show you guys, guys how it looks. Starting the tourney. Now this one is basically the same, so the player will see this when he is uh, accepted in the tourney and he also gets uh, access to the tourney chat. He can't do anything until the pairings have been submitted, so we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna go back and auto pair, and here I can see the message. Just respond, and we can go to auto pairings, and now this page will refresh by itself. There we go, and I can see who I'm paired against. So the uh, MTJ nick will show up under the player name. Uh, the eTrop account don't have any MTJ account associated. If you click this little gamepad, it will copy the uh, game nick and you can paste it directly into the client. So you play your game and after you're done, uh, so this we are still on the player side here, so I can add results and only to my own match. So I can't, I can't do anything with the other matches. And I won two games to zero. What is really important is that both players add the result. So I've added the result, so I'm basically done. I'm just waiting for my opponents to do the same. Uh, at the admin screen, I can see that uh, only one player has added as, uh, a result. Uh, so if both players add results, uh, this will show up green. And I don't basically don't have to do anything at all. Right now, since I am the person um, that is an administrator, uh, I have to put in two and zero. And there we go. And that was that tourney. <laughs> we won. Uh, when the tourney is done and the results are displayed, the deck list will also be uh, displayed. 
So I hope you found this useful. And if you ever need to run an MTG Swiss tournament, you now know how to do it. So good luck.